Okay. So, there's obviously a lot of talking about this. I'll preface this with saying I don't think there's an objectively correct solution to this. I think that every rule set you can think of is going to have its pros, it's going to have its cons, and it's all about trying to find the best ground you can. Uh, and obviously, that changes a lot of factors. What are you trying to accomplish as a community? Are you trying to accomplish competitive integrity? Are you trying to make it enjoyable for the audience? I don't know. But... In my eyes, this rule set, I'm kind of doing this. The way I picture my rule set is I want to have as fair gameplay as you possibly can without without really going down any slippery slopes, I guess. Um, it's, it's a blanket term, but I'll, I'll kind of explain what I mean as I go along. But I'm not going to be like adding new stages to the stage list. Um, I think you're not going to get more than six. I don't really like the idea of having two versions of the same stage. I, I think it's an interesting idea and it could work, but for my personal taste, I don't really like it that much. But there is one idea that does change that I thought was really, really interesting that I'll get into. So basically, you have your starters. Doesn't change. You have Battlefield, Fountain of Dreams, Yoshi's Story, Dreamland. And I do think that Frozen Pokemon Stadium should be a starter. I don't think FD should be a starter. I think FD is like the definition of a counter pick. And I'll explain really quickly why I think Freezing Stadium is okay and why I don't think you should freeze the other stages. Again, people can disagree, that's fine. In my eyes, you freeze Stadium because Stadium introduces elements that have gotten other stages ruled out of the competitive list. And it's not like you can't, it's not like most of the stages you can like you can just pause it on like one screen and have the stage be okay. They have like fundamental parts of the stage that are just completely jank and shouldn't be allowed. Uh, Frozen Pokemon Stadium, I think is an extremely good stage. No reason not to have it if, as long as you don't care about software mods. I think it's you. It's a 17 year old game. At some point, you have to you have to abandon the argument of like always have to stick true to the game's roots because there's no game. Look at sports. Like, even something like baseball is introducing, like, technology into it. Same thing with football. You can't have a static list or something for that many years. You have to kind of grow over time. That's my personal opinion. I think progress is a good thing. It should be encouraged, not dissuaded. Um, I don't think you should freeze Yoshi's Dream Liner Fountain as much as I hate the variants on them. Because they don't actually introduce any elements that have gotten other stages banned to my knowledge even if they're annoying that doesn't make them bannable like i've kind of done this with like my ice climbers argument depending on why you want to ban ice climbers i think you should never ban ice climbers under the under the pretense that it's annoying because that's just not a good enough reason you have to have a fundamental reason why you need to ban something uh, you might want to ban it for other reasons, and that could be perfectly reasonable, but that's my take on it. So that's why I think freezing stadium would be fine, but freezing the other stages would be bad. On my pro anti wobbling, I will get to that. So I do think counter picked should be final destination. And now I think it should be normal stage striking. It should be A, B, B. B, A, and in best of threes, uh, winner bans. And now the interesting thing that I heard of the other day is that in a best of five, one ban per set. You don't get a ban after every game you win, you get one ban per set. I think that it's really silly. There are, and this isn't just Fox Martha. Full disclaimer, I know there's going to be someone in comments that's going on YouTube. There's going to be someone in chat being like, oh, you just don't like FD because of Marth. No. I think there are plenty of matchups where there's an extremely ostracizing stage in one matchup. And I think it's really stupid that someone can just go there twice. And it all, and it, frankly, it's it's less it's less interesting. Like, it's way, it's way less interesting. This would encourage more stage diversity. It would make it a lot more interesting. And quite frankly, it makes going down 0-2 in almost every matchup significantly less scary. It makes it a lot more interesting for people. It makes it a lot more interesting for players. And I don't think you should get a freebie. 
going up 2-0 is an advantage in and of itself that you've worked for. In certain matchups, I don't think you can just spam uh, the same stage. Now, having said that, I do think you need to have modified DSR. I'm pretty sure it's modified, where you can you can't go back to the last stage that you won on. Uh, the reason I say this is because there are certain matchups. So let's say, let, let's just say Fox Marth, okay? Let's say Fox wins on Yoshi's in Dreamland. Um, well, let's say someone wins on three stages and the other person wins on two stages and there's an even stage. If he wins on two stages, including his best stage, I can ban the third stage and now he actually has to go to a stage that's favored for me, which would be really, really silly. And so I think in that case, if you wanted to go this route, you would have to have modified DSR. Uh, there could be situations that would crop up where someone would be forced to go to a disadvantageous stage. So I think modified DSR would be super important for that. What's the difference between and best by ban 1%? Um, you can, so, well, they're just different things entirely. Most people are advocating for bans in best of five, which means after each game that you win, you get a ban. But this is one ban per set. So each set, you get one ban beforehand. And so, like, let's say I go down 0-2 to Marth, and I win a game, it's 1-2. He goes to FD, I win, it's 2-2. Next game, I can, ba I can ban FD, and he can't go back. Now, if I banned FD game 4, and he had to go somewhere else, I cannot ban FD game 5. So he gets FD. So you still get your strongest stage, but you can't spam it, which I think it's kind of silly that you could spam the stage anyways. But obviously, there's going to be some people saying, oh, you're only saying this because you have a really disadvantageous stage. No, I think that there's a lot of matchups where this is a really stupid thing, and it quite frankly just makes it kind of boring. So that's kind of the way I view this. That's how I would probably do my stages and my modified DSR. Again, to kind of address a few other things, I think I addressed why I would freeze the other stages. Uh, I don't agree with having two versions of Stadium, personally, but I see why it could be really interesting. Um, I just don't like having two versions of the same stage. Something about it, I haven't really thought about it too much, but something about it just kind of, eh, I'm just like, no, I, I think that's like too far. You gotta go one way or the other. Um, I don't think you should open up to more stages, obviously. There aren't many more stages that are viable, and I don't think you should mod other stages to be competitively viable. Now, maybe if there was a stage that if you froze it, it became competitively viable and was unique, I'd be down. But I can't think of a stage that that exists on without altering the stage itself, which I don't like doing. Okay. So that's that. Uh, let's scale it down to 26. Now for kind of the extra rules, I guess. Obviously, no excessive stalling. That's obvious. Um, how to define that? Not really up to me. I can give my own ideas, but how do you feel about being able to count a pick where you struck to? Uh, in this rule set, I think you would have to be able to do that. So, no excessive stalling, obviously. I think wobbling is legal. Um, I'll be completely honest. I think that depending on why you want to ban it from a competitive standpoint you can't ban wobbling it's not fundamentally broken sure it's brokenly easy but i'll be completely honest there's so many ways to get around it and every single good character beats ice climbers including in my opinion chic i think every good character beats ice climbers unless you're basically playing a character even some of the most of the bad characters the only character i can think of that loses is pikachu even samus beats ices uh yoshi beats ices it's like, even like, I've heard like Ice Climbers complain about like Luigi and Doc. So, wobbling should not be banned. I don't think it should be. And even if you hate it, um, pre mashing is a thing. Learning how to get out of the down throw setups are a thing. Playing around the grab is a thing. Like, honestly, FD, you get grabbed by Marth, you're probably dead more often than if you get grabbed by Ice Climbers, because pre-wobbling should get you out, through pre-mashing gets you out of so many wobbles, unless you're at a high percent, which case you probably should die anyways. And, that just, I don't know. It's, if you're worried about wobbling for the competitive health of the game, like, entry, le entry level for low players who just get wobbled out of every tournament, or something like that, 
or maybe like worrying about viewership. Okay, I'm not in a position to talk about that. I don't really know, so I won't comment on that. But in my opinion, wobbling should be completely legal. Now for ledge grab limit, I do think it has to be instituted. I think that even if it hasn't happened yet, there is too much bull crap that you can do with a ledge grab element. However, I know it's subjective. I don't think it should be the same. So it's hard for me to say because I think you can have a ledge grab limit, but I do think in that instance, you have to have either a varying one, which I don't really like, or you have a different way to quantify, to qualify puff stalling. Puff does not need to grab ledge 60 times to time out a match. That's well aware. Puff does not need to time someone out. I don't know what the solution is. Maybe a landing clause. Puff has to land a certain amount of times every game in a timeout. And if she doesn't land a certain amount of times, then she loses. Maybe airtime. I don't know. I do think there should be a left grab limit. 60 is the number that's thrown around. I don't see a reason why... It you shouldn't need to grab ledge more than 60 times in a game. Uh, you just shouldn't. If you're doing it, you're probably stalling. So I think 60 is a pretty safe number from what I can tell. Obviously, that's something to change. Uh, Puff needs to have another way to watch her out. I don't... Maybe... So Puff nerf... So Puff camping nerf. Either air... Either landing quota or air time limit. I don't know which... We need to test it. Um, Puff clearly has way too much stuff, and she can play the game in a way that no one else can play, and she can make someone... It's just... She, she can effectively just not play for however long she wants. Work on an actual definition. And this, I guess I'll actually put this as a subsidiary bullet point. So, yeah, Puff needs to be nerfed in terms of how she can degenerately, like, make games be extremely degenerate, basically. Um, I will say, I don't think she should lose timeouts, because she can, like, I've seen, like, Amsa time her out. Maybe you have to accept that, because it's a necessary, like, you have to do it to make it necessary. She, you can't limit it any other way. Maybe if you can't limit it any other way, possible. So, very important to recognize this could cause a lot of other problems. Um, I feel like we don't need a clock in melee. I feel like you're wrong. I think we definitely need a clock because there are some people who would just wait for you to approach. Some matchups need clocks. Uh, I don't think the timer should be changed. To change it no lower than seven minutes. I think any lower than that will actually uh, encourage timeouts. Anything less than that, you would have to scale the ledge grab limit, and I think it would actually just encourage uh, timeouts more than anything else. If people play a matchup where they can get hit and run away for five minutes, you're going to see a lot more people doing that than for eight minutes. That's, a, that's for damn sure. But most people don't take into account the clock because it's eight minutes. But it does happen sometimes, and with a lower clock, people, I think, would take into account significantly more. And so I'm pretty sure that that covers about everything that I would do for a rule set. So again, I think these should be the starters. Final Destination is the definition of a counterpick. It's a very polarizing stage in a lot of matchups, not just Fox Marth, Fox Puff, Fox uh, Sheik, Fox Falcon, Marth versus a bunch of characters. I think it's very polarizing, a Marth Peach. Um, I'm assuming it's Mars best for Sheik, but Sheik doesn't get, like, invalidated on it. 
no clock sounds good then just enforce no stalling i uh, we would need an actual definition for stalling before we could do that totally but people would actually be encouraged to time out if we try five or four minutes uh final destination should be a counter pick in my opinion same stage striking best of three winner bands and then uh Loser pick stage. Loser pick stage. Winner picks character. Loser picks character. Percent. So, winner chooses whether or not to use ban. Loser picks stage. Winner picks character. Loser. Whether or not to ban, then best of three will set. Can only use a ban once per set. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, let me reduce the font a little bit. I also like this because this encourages more stages to be used in matches generally that you wouldn't normally see. Um, that you do run the risk of having to go back to uh, a stage that you previously won on, but theoretically, stage strikes are way better than uh, do, doing that is way better than having someone just spam their best stage twice. And I think this is true in every matchup. Um, I think that's just a really dumb thing to be able to do. And in a lot of cases, I don't think that the modified DSR would change too much. Not more than this would change. But yeah, nothing crazy in the extra rules. No excessive stall, no stalling. Uh, obviously, if it's like down to like five seconds and you run out of the stage, that's fine. Uh, Puff camping or somehow Puff needs to be nerfed for camping. I don't know which we would need to test it. Uh, you could do losing timeouts, but I think this would cause an, a whole other host of problems. Uh, wobbling should be legal in my opinion, and then the timer should probably remain unchanged. I have thought about seven minutes, and I'm th and I think that maybe it's a good idea, but I'd have to think about it more. Okay, I'm gonna play Johnny after this dumb too. But yeah, so if anyone wants to talk in chat or comment, uh, just let me know. And if anyone in the YouTube comments on this, I'll make sure to get back to that because these are pretty like good topics to talk about.